First, make sure you have a full backup. Uh, yes, Bartholomew, back it up. Um, when finished, reboot the system. John, are you getting this? Yeah, yeah, yes. This is John McAfee. In 1987, he invented the McAfee antivirus software. He had a net worth of $100 million and flew to Belize to live like a real-life GTA character. After a series of events, he was eventually found dead in his prison cell under mysterious circumstances. He built one of the biggest antivirus companies to date, and yet it's what happened after this chapter of his life that made him a legend. McAfee once lived in Belize and got caught up with drugs and other illegal activities. He made a bid to run for president, founded his own political party, named the chairman and CEO of a mysterious company, went under investigation, and was eventually found dead in his prison cell. This is the insane story of how a tech pioneer became a real-life GTA character. John McAfee was born in the UK in the mid-1940s. His parents moved to Roanoke, Virginia when he was young. His early life was tough. His father, who worked as a road surveyor, was an alcoholic. When McAfee was 15, his father committed suicide. A fact McAfee said he woke up with every day. McAfee went to Roanoke College, where he also took up drinking. But the younger McAfee was a driven entrepreneur at a young age. His first business sold magazines door to door, which he said made him a small fortune. He began working at a company that coded punch card systems in the late 60s. This taught him the basics of early computing. Using this information, he landed a job at Missouri Pacific Railroad, where he helped the company use a newfangled IBM computer system to help calibrate train schedules. While at Missouri Pacific Railroad, he began to dabble with harder drugs. He would go to work many days while tripping on LSD. One day, he was sold a bag of a psychedelic known as DMT. McAfee snorted a line of the drug, felt nothing, and then decided to do the whole bag. Then all hell broke loose. He freaked out, ran outside, and hid behind a trash can. He never went back to Missouri Pacific. McAfee moved to Silicon Valley in the 1970s. He held numerous jobs at various tech companies, including a stint at NASA's Institute for Space Studies, all the while abusing drugs and alcohol. He was working at the company Omex and found his daily routine to be snorting coke at his desk and drinking a bottle of scotch. In the 1980s, McAfee worked at Lockheed. At the time, computers were still relatively new. In 1986, the first computer virus hit PCs. He read about these new programs that infiltrated computers and decided to start his own company to fight back. McAfee Associates took off. By the end of the 1980s, the company was making $5 million a year, and some of the biggest companies in the world were using his antivirus platform. McAfee quickly became even more successful, largely because of a computer virus called Michelangelo that hit the scene in 1992. McAfee called it one of the worst viruses to date, estimating it would infect as many as 5 million computers. At the time, computer antivirus platforms weren't a product most people bought. Thanks to Michelangelo, there was a growing fever to protect computers from the virus. Though only some tens of thousands of computers were infected, Michelangelo propelled McAfee to go public, and it turned into a multi-million dollar business. In 1994, McAfee set his sights for greener pastures and resigned from McAfee. Two years later, he sold his shares, which gave him about $100 million. Following his resignation, McAfee kept a relatively low profile. He would give young startups advice, lecture at Stanford Graduate School of Business, and also work on projects of his own. In 2008, however, the economic collapse caught up to him. One report said that his fortune had shrunk from $100 million to as little as $4 million. In the late 2000s, McAfee decided to sell his land and move to Belize, a tropical country along the coast of Central America. McAfee resided in a beachfront mansion with his girlfriend, Alison Adonisio. She was a botanist who studied the use of plants in medicine and antibiotics. McAfee had committed to funding her research in the hopes of developing a new pharmaceutical drug for their company, Quoramax. However, Quoramax would soon go south as McAfee's personality took a turn for the worst. In December of that year, McAfee had developed an addictive drug habit. He posted to an online drug forum about his use of bath salts, more specifically MDPV, a psychoactive and synthetic stimulant that has effects similar to that of cocaine. 
McAfee posted his experience and also cited that he was manufacturing strains of MDPV that he claimed to have tested on himself. McAfee's drug habits would only further spiral him into a life of crime and violence. It is believed that McAfee began distributing illegal drugs. He built up a reputation in Belize. He surrounded himself with many street escorts and local gangsters. McAfee also loved guns and had a hefty supply at his compound. McAfee bragged about sleeping, eating, and showering with a pistol at all times. He was not untouchable and had developed many enemies along the way. In an interview, McAfee stated that enemies in Belize and even his own girls had tried to kill him more than a dozen times. In order to ensure his security, McAfee created his own law enforcement consisting of ex-cons, local gangsters, and corrupt police officers in the neighboring village. With this strong network of protection, McAfee had essentially taken the power of the Caribbean town under his own authority. At one point, he even set a curfew for the town to abide by and threatened to kill anyone who disobeyed the curfew. Eddie McCoy, also known as Mac-10, was a notorious gangster in Belize and was also one of McAfee's close acquaintances amongst the gang. At one point, McAfee had allegedly hired Mac-10 as a hitman who was responsible for the brutal and public execution of another man accused of robbing one of their properties. Although the government had previously suspicions of McAfee's activities, his involvement with Mac-10 is what led to a serious investigation. Shortly thereafter, the gang suppression unit, also known as GSU, would raid McAfee's compound under the assumption that he was manufacturing and distributing methamphetamine. He woke up at 6 in the morning to 42 armed soldiers in full riot gear, carrying automatic weapons storming his property. They would discover multiple firearms and stacks of cash, but no illegal substances to incriminate him. McAfee would post online that he was in hiding and on the run from the corrupt GSU law enforcement who had been hunting him. Under extreme paranoia, he would recount the instance in which he was tracked down on the local beach and held surrounded by half a dozen large armed men. After such instances, McAfee later moved back to his beachfront villa away from his laboratory compound. McAfee had brought back his gangster lifestyle of guns, girls, and guards. As you can imagine, many of his neighbors were frightened by McAfee's gang. Residents filed a petition against McAfee, stating that his security guards and dogs created an unsafe environment for locals and tourists. One resident, Greg Fall, was McAfee's most vocal critic. Fall was a former Marine living in his dream home on the beach of Belize for his retirement. However, the two had many run-ins, which led to some physical and almost deadly altercations. Greg Fall had come across a pack of McAfee's dogs along the beach and confronted him, in which McAfee threatened Fall with a firearm. In later weeks, McAfee's dogs were all found poisoned and killed by an unknown assailant. Allegedly, this was Fall's own way of handling McAfee. However, this has never been confirmed. A few weeks later, Greg Fall was found murdered in his home. Investigations of the murder reveal a break and enter in which Fall was tasered multiple times and then shot in the back of the head. Motive and a fit to the crime pointed right back to McAfee, who would become a person of interest for detectives. When pursued for questioning, McAfee went back into hiding. He claimed that the GSU had actually made an attempt on his life and mistaken him for his neighbor. Other theories on Fall's murder point back to Mac-10. According to an interview with McAfee's custodial worker, he was given $5,000 from McAfee to wire into Mac 10's bank account and had driven him across the beach the night of Fall's murder. Despite all key evidence pointing back to McAfee, Belizean officials did not have DNA testing at the time of the case and could not link anything back to them. Still on the run from the police, McAfee was able to dodge authorities by constantly moving between motels and changing his appearance. However, he eventually had his location exposed on a Vice documentary and was forced to flee Guatemala. Shortly after, McAfee was arrested outside his hotel for entering the country illegally. The Foreign Ministry of Guatemala didn't know how to handle him since they didn't hold any actual outstanding arrest warrants for McAfee. Because there were no reason to detain him, he did not have any legal case pending against him. They decided to extradite McAfee back to Belize, but before he could be extradited, McAfee faked a heart attack. He was able to buy some time for his legal attorney, which further allowed an appeal to go through in which McAfee was sent back to Miami. McAfee and Mac-10 were never found guilty for the murder of Greg Fall. Following this, a media frenzy ensued. Everyone wanted to know who he was, where he was going, and if he was crazy. 
so he uploaded a video titled How to Uninstall McAfee Antivirus. It showed him surrounded by women while trying to uninstall the software he invented. The video also showed guns and allusions to drugs and drug use, although it was undoubtedly meant to be some sort of parody. In August, McAfee was arrested on charges of DUI and handgun possession. In a Facebook post, he admitted to driving under the influence of Xanax, but blamed his doctor for not specifying that driving while under the influence of the drug could be dangerous. In 2015, he filed paperwork to run in the 2016 presidential race and announced he would form his own political party, the Cyber Party. McAfee took his campaign to the Libertarian Party National Convention, but failed to secure the nomination. In May, McAfee was appointed chairman and CEO of a mysterious tech company, MGT Technologies. The company originally invested in daily fantasy and mobile games, but pivoted to cybersecurity. The company also announced its investment in a tiny drug maker unrelated to cybersecurity. In August 2017, McAfee stepped down as CEO, instead serving as MGT's chief cybersecurity visionary. In January 2018, he left the company altogether. Both sides said the split was amicable. He said he wanted to spend all of his time on cryptocurrencies while the company told of pressure from potential investors to disassociate itself from him. In October 2020, McAfee was arrested in Spain at the request of the United States Department of Justice for tax evasion. The US Securities and Exchange Commission filed a complaint further alleging McAfee and his bodyguard promoted certain initial coin offerings in a fraudulent cryptocurrency pump and dump scheme. It claims he presented himself as an impartial investor when he promoted the ICOs, despite allegedly getting paid $23 million in digital assets in return. In March 2021, the US Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York formally indicted him on these charges. McAfee was jailed in Spain, pending extradition to the United States. Then, in June 2021, McAfee was found dead in his prison cell in Barcelona, hours after the Spanish National Court ordered his extradition to the United States on criminal charges. The Catalan Justice Department said everything indicated he killed himself by hanging. An official autopsy apparently confirmed his suicide. But McAfee's death ignited speculation about the possibility that he was murdered. McAfee's death drew comparisons to the circumstances of the death of American financier Jeffrey Epstein, who was found dead in August 2019, while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. Several times, McAfee claimed if he were ever found dead by hanging, it would mean he was murdered. He even tweeted about it. Minutes after the report of his death, an image of the letter Q was posted on his Instagram feed. His account was subsequently taken down, apparently in reference to QAnon conspiracy theories. The day after his death, his lawyer told reporters that while he regularly maintained contact with McAfee in prison, there were no signs of suicidal intent. McAfee's widow reaffirmed this position in her first public remarks since her husband's death and also called for a thorough investigation. There's a lesson in every story. What can we learn about McAfee's insane journey? Well, you could argue that he stepped over the line. His actions eventually got the authorities involved, and no matter how powerful he thought he was, he eventually got caught. From tech pioneer to real-life GTA character, McAfee is certainly an eccentric entrepreneur. He started a company that revolutionized the tech industry and cemented his legacy and name in history. He just wanted to live as a true sovereign individual, a free man who didn't care what others thought of him. It's debatable whether he actually took his own life as he died in very mysterious circumstances. The details of his death are still shrouded in mystery and nobody knows for sure, but the comment section in this one will be very interesting. Thanks for staying till the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the like button, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this. Also, be sure to check out our other videos on this channel. Links are in the description and we'll see you in the next one.